Erev Tov Chabrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. Got some very interesting stories coming out tonight. Going to be talking about it in just a few minutes. The Syrian Arab army has crossed the Euphrates River. Contrary to what U.S. and Free Syrian Army uh, has been calling on, they have crossed it. We're going to go into that in just a moment. But I want to real quick talk to you again about the video I released last night. The Holy Spirit revealing even more to me about what's going on. And friends, I can tell you right now, they want that. That video suppress. I have never seen such low views on a message that is so extremely important. But it kind of goes along like with George Con, excuse me, John Con, uh, Cornwell that wrote the book Hitler's Pope about Pope Paul, uh, Pope Pius the Twelfth. It is no doubt they don't want this to come out. They want to keep it silence. They want to keep me shut up and in the dark. And in fact. One of the very United Nations members that came to my own home that told me to keep my mouth shut about the Vatican was involved in trying to exonerate Pope Pius XII as well. Now, I considered him a very good friend, and I I would hate to diminish that even to this day, but I was taking the warning very seriously, but at the same time trying to prove that it's not the way you think it is. But nonetheless, there's still a major move amongst uh, Jewish people, amongst uh, Catholic, uh, Catholic scholars as well, to exonerate the Catholic Church and whitewash their sins because why? They're trying to get complete control of Israel and revive the Babylonian Empire. It's more, it's much bigger than what you could ever imagine. That's why we war in Syria. That's why we war, we war in Iraq. That's why we're going to war in Lebanon. This is why the Arab Spring over in Egypt happened. This is why Hillary Clinton was exonerated for what happened over there. Because why? She is part and was working part of the campaign for the Catholic Church for that greater global dominance of the Middle East. And Israel does play a part. But you know, Menachem Begin, he threw a major uh, curve into the whole program when he became Prime Minister of Israel. They weren't expecting him to get into office there. The very man that was part of the Ergon uh the Ergon right wing us there that were willing to take Jerusalem and they didn't care what a kind of agreement that Ben Gurion or any of the others had, had made in there. They didn't care about those agreements. They wanted to be one as an Israeli defense force. They were willing to work with Ben Gurion and Rabin and those groups that were there that were also working clearly, obviously, no doubt, with the Pope of Rome, because as we already know, Pope Pius XII was the one that was calling for Jerusalem to be an international city in 1947. The Resolution 181 calls for Jerusalem being an international city with a UN controlling it. But as Giulio Miotti brought out, it's the Vatican that wants to lay their hands on Jerusalem. And they would be the custodians of the city once it becomes an international city. And of course, the 1967's war also threw another monkey wrench into their plans there. They did get to keep Jerusalem from 48 to 67. But when Menachem Begin became prime minister, the very man that was working with the Ergon that was willing to fight for Jerusalem in the very beginning, when he became prime minister, you can count on one thing. They went to work looking for someone, well, maybe not so much Catholic, but maybe an evangelical figure that they can begin to weaken the nation down. And there's some plans that the Holy Spirit revealed to me that I finally have always been suspicious about it, always looked at it might be as a positive thing, but what were they doing? They were making ready for the future of Israel. They were grooming their their man for the hour there. They would be willing to give them what they wanted. And we're going to go in to that later. Won't go into it today, but I guarantee you one thing. Go back, share that video, Rome taking over Jerusalem with working with some of the Jewish leaders of their day back in the, when Israel became a nation in 1948. You need to share it, get it out there. I mean, gosh, if you got to take just a video link and put it on uh, Facebook, if they don't let you on Facebook, go to there to that, um, all these other different free sites that are out there, share it everywhere you can. People need to know the truth. If you're going to stand with Israel, then you need to stand with Israel. That are the Jews that love Israel and want Israel to be a homeland for the Jewish people without Roman ties to the land, without Rome owning 60% of the land and without being expelled from their land because they cannot have freedom of religion. 
All right. So, and again, well, I, I can get on a whole toot about that, guys, and I don't want to do that tonight. Let's go right into what's going on here. We'll come back to this later. Just please share that video. Stand with us here at Israeli News Live. You know, we need your support as well in making these type stories come out and, and to reveal what's happening. And I'm going to go into this stuff this weekend. It's not going to make too many people happy because there's a lot of propagandists they got going on out there in the evangel evangelical circles, in the messianic circles. You know, I mean, look at some of these incredible people that have exposed Rome and what they do and how the Jesuits infiltrate all the different main religions. We've had Jesuits try to infiltrate our little tiny ministry here. Why? To sway us in a direction that they wanted us to go into. I won't do it. I just won't do it. You know, and I thank God that he's opened my eyes to see what's happening. Uh, and not, not to say it's not been some good people, some kind people, loving people, but it's a danger. You got to watch for it. Anyway, let's see what's happening over in Syria. As we brought this out the other day, U.S.-led coalition will not allow Syrian army to cross the Euphrates River, and De Azor reports are coming out. Uh, this was uh, coming out right there. It says the Syrian Arab uh, coalition commences offenses towards Deir uh, Azor or Deir Azor. The combined joint task force coalition welcomes the announcement by the Syrian Arab coalition of the uh, commencement of their offensives to defeat ISIS in the Kabar River Valley. Now we listen to the uh, to to this to this uh, uh, commander right here saying that. That they, that they weren't going to allow the Syrian Arab army to cross the Euphrates River, which is always kind of baffling to me. We already know that without the invitation of the Syrian president, President Bashar al-Assad, safe zones were set up down near Al-Tanf. wasn't really too safe and wasn't a no-conflict zone because, believe me, when uh, some of the Syrian Arab army uh, forces were going near Al-Tanf, they went ahead and bombed them. So not so much a deconfliction zone, just a land grab is what it really comes down to being. And just like right now, the Kurds, you think, Kurds, my Kurdish friends, do you think that the U.S. military and the coalition there, they give five cents about the Kurdish people? No. If they did, they would have never allowed the Turkish people to bomb you over and over and over again. No, they used you for the purpose of gaining the land there in Syria and Iraq because it's rich in oil. And they need you as a partner because Bashar al-Assad is not going to be a partner with the United States on the oil reserves that are there along that river valley. And that's why they're going to do it. But anyway, the interesting news is, is the fact that uh, the U.S. actually crossed that river. Look at there. Here I am on Reuters. Because it speaks about the Syrian Arab army getting across that river, they put a block out even on Reuters. They don't want you to know about this. So let's kind of try to bring it back up again, if it'll even come up uh, on the screen here. They definitely did that. Watch, let's see if RT's up. Well, we got RT up. You know why? Because it was actually in the Arabic language, so it doesn't pick up very well. I just used uh, Google Translate to translate on here. Now, their translation is not the best in the world for the Arabic language, so I'll, I'll let you know what the gist of the story is. The Iranian Revolutionary Guard has penetrated the U.S. military command centers in Syria and Iraq. It does not say whether or not, according to the article here, it does not say whether or not Syria did this through infiltration with manpower or if they have infiltrated the U.S. command center in Syria and Iraq uh, via cyber, uh, cyber uh, espionage. Uh, they claim that they have some very incriminating evidence. Uh, nonetheless, uh, I'm not in favor of Iran at all. And uh, as I realize that that is a major threat for Israel even to this day, and uh, you know, regardless of who's in power in in uh, in Israel, it doesn't seem like that we can ever get a peace with Iran. Now, maybe back before Iran began to really um, come against the Jewish people that were living in their land, maybe at that time there, maybe there would have been an easier time to negotiate with the Iranians. But it doesn't it seems like that time is long past. And let's go back to the Reuters article here. Wow, they still, they just do not want us to be able to see this article. Uh, let's see if we get it over here. No, that's the U.S. won't be satisfied until they get out of there. Uh, uh, let me just, I'm going to try to pull it up again here. We'll go over here to Twitter. What it is, is that the uh, Maria Zakharova, who's a spokesman for the, for the Kremlin, uh, is stating here that the Syrian Arab army uh, um, has crossed the Euphrates. 
This is an official uh, acknowledgement by the by the uh, the government or by the uh, the the Russian government and uh, and let's just see if we can find this again. Yes, here we go. Let's see. This is the article here. Let's see if we can pull it up. No, this is actually one from an Iranian news. Syrian army crosses Euphrates River in Deir Azor, Russian foreign minister. Uh, even though this is an Iranian news, it is still the same as what Reuters brought out. Uh, I know because I have seen this article already, but I was wanting to use Reuters because I would prefer to use Reuters in this case. It says the Syrian Arab army has crossed the Euphrates River and Deir ez govern it after making several advances against the so-called Islamic State terror organization. The spokesperson for the Russian Foreign Ministry, Maria Zakharova, stated on Friday. Now we turn the current agenda in the, in the international relations of, on the development of the situation in Syria. I would like to inform you that after a major victory in Deir Azor, the Syrian government uh, army continues to clear ISIS terrorists in the eastern regions of the country. The suburbs of this uh, provincial center have been liberated. The advanced units successfully crossed the Euphrates River, uh, reaching its eastern zone, Zara Zakharova confirmed. Uh, so it is official. They have crossed it, even with the threat of the U.S. saying that they better not cross it. Uh, Reuters was reporting this. From what I understand, there is a media blackout on the fact that the Syrians have crossed the river there. Uh, I can understand why, because they don't want you to know it. It's an embarrassment for the U.S. Uh, for this to happen. I'm sure it will be coming out very soon. Uh, but indeed, yes, the, the let me just see if I can find that uh, source in um, and Reuters. I'd like to find that again with Reuters because... Uh, yes, here we go. This is it. <clears throat> we got it for a few minutes anyway until they block it out. Uh, Reuters News is reporting Russia, Syrian government forces now on the east bank of the Euphrates. Let me blow it up for you so it's nice and big. We can see this there. Uh, this, again, is going to be very disturbing for the U.S. to acknowledge the fact they've done it after they have threatened them not to cross over says advanced units of the Syrian government army have crossed the Euphrates River and taken up positions on the eastern bank, a Russian foreign ministry spokeswoman said on Friday. U.S.-backed Syrian militias opposed to President Bashar al-Assad had set up Euphrates Rivers as a red line, saying they would not allow government forces to cross onto the east bank. After a major victory near Deir ez-Zor, uh, the Syrian government army continues to clear Islamic State terrorists from the eastern regions of the country. Ministry spokeswoman Spokeswoman Maria Zakharova told a news conference. It is official. They have crossed it. Uh, a very big victory for the Syrian Arab army uh, in, in making this advancement here. It is really sad, friends. It's really sad what the Syrian people have gone through. Uh, and, and, and I have taken up for them. I've taken up for the Kurds as well. You know, no different the Kurds as I have the Syrian people because I've watched the Kurds be used as a a pawn in a chess game by both Russia and the United States. Both of them saying they were great fighters against ISIS, but yet neither side was really willing to come to their aid. The United States, I was in, I was in um, uh, when, when the United Nations was meeting, uh, talking about a ceasefire in Syria, and they had brought over the Free Syrian Army uh, to, to, their, to their headquarters there in Europe. And we were there. We were actually in the hotel where the Free Syrian Army was being kept at and the U.S. negotiators were meeting with them. But when it come to the Kurds, their representative, he came there to Geneva, but he wasn't allowed in the meeting whatsoever. He wasn't even allowed to come to the, to the meetings was, at, at all. The U.S. didn't want him there. But now suddenly the U.S. likes the Kurds. And for Kurdish people, you guys are just really dumb for even falling for this. It's a, you're just part of a political pawn. And I understand, you want your own country. And when you look at it, there's uh, one, one young lady there. Let me just see, I'll pull her up real quick because I've seen her at the top as I was going through. Here, here we go right here. Partisan girl herself, she had pulled up a map. And I want to see if I can pull it up. Yeah, here it is right here on her page right here. Very interesting map right here. She shows the map of the Kurdish uh, population in Syria versus the Kurdish land grab in the northeastern part of Syria. All right, now here is 
what she's showing as a land grab. They've taken up all this land right here, and they're pushing to take all the land all the way down here, down to the bottom parts, what they want to get as well, because the U.S. needs the Kurds to have their own place called Kurdistan, uh, and of course, crossing over into Iraq uh, as well. They want to have all that. Now, then she shows where the map, where the Kurdish people actually reside, which is the gray area here on your map. You may not be able to see that very well, uh, and it is the upper part of the eastern part of Syria right here. That is so. That is part of where they are predominantly at, uh, but it doesn't go down. Uh, I, I, my apology, my apology. It is... It is just up here in this far northeastern part of the Syrian uh, country here. Not all down through here, not down by Deir and places like that where they're trying to uh, create their own state. So what she's showing is that this northern corner, and then when you go into Iraq, all of this region here, the northeastern part of Iraq, as well as the biggest part of half of Turkey to the east there is where the Kurdish people actually live. And I kind of believe that they should really create a state for them in Iraq and also the, a big portion of eastern Turkey. That should be where they should be given a state. The, the, the Kurdish people deserve it, and I agree with them. That's why the Israelis have always stood with the Kurdish people. They have been friends with them for a long time. But in this case here, uh, it's totally different. We see again, now this, the map is just blown up bigger is what it is. Uh, this is the area where the Kurds actually reside, but they're trying to take the entire northern province, and the U.S. would like to have all the way down through here as well, and it's all for one reason. It's not, it's not for them to get the state where they live at, where, where the Kurds are actually from, but it's a land grab in order to fulfill the United States' desire. And the U.S. needs this because if they're going to run a pipeline from, from Qatar up through Syria, Without Bashar al-Assad's approval, they need a Kurdistan that allow it to go up through Turkey and then come out in that direction there. This is why the land grab is happening the way it is. And now the U.S. has taken advantage of the Kurdish people to do exactly that. And of course, I'm sure the Kurds are going to do whatever they can just to get themselves a homeland. So that's the way it's laying out right now, friends. Very interesting how this is all playing out at this point in time right now. Uh, one other thing I want to bring up to your attention as well. Russia rejects Israeli requests for a buffer zone in Syria. Now, at first when I thought about this, I thought, well, you know, the Golan Heights is a buffer zone to begin with, but that is part of Israel. We took this during the war, the Six Days War, when we were battling with Syria as well, one of the invading countries uh, that were fighting against the Israeli state at that time. Uh, but I'm also concerned as well for Israel in this case here, because as you read the article here, you find out, and let me kind of make this large enough for you to kind of see what's going on here. Russia rejected an Israeli request for a 60-kilometer buffer zone between the Golan Heights and the so-called Iranian-backed groups in Syria. I don't think that Israel is actually asking to go inside 60 kilometers and actually take this control of this land like in the case of the Golan. But I believe that what the Israeli government is trying to do here is that they do not allow the Iranian forces to be within 60 kilometers of the, of the border. And for Russia to reject this idea just really is uncalled for. Uh, you know, Prime, uh, Pre President Putin really should take into consideration that is a threat for Israel. Much like what we had in Lebanon years ago, Israel had the buffer zone, far, far more land up into the northern part of Israel, up into Lebanon. And when Israel w w withdrew from there, trying to make peace with Lebanon, uh, it's never it's never helped matters. It's only made the matters worse. Hezbollah has gotten worse than what they were before. So Israel does have very legitimate uh, concerns uh, that President Putin is not honoring this request. He's only giving a five-kilometer uh, buffer zone, and that's just really not enough. I mean, uh, I know that uh, the Israelis don't even want Russian troops in that area, but in my opinion there, it should be Russian troops. And I know that the Israelis are calling for American troops to be in that area, and granted so, it would seem to be a lot safer with Americans there than it would be the Russians. Uh, but again, when I see that, I realize what is going on. That is some of the polit politicians in the Israeli government working with Rome to revive that Babylonian empire that Babylon once controlled uh, before. And of course, we had Israel's leaders back 
uh, well over 2,000 years ago that were doing exactly that with the Babylonians. They were controlling that part of the region of the world. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom. God bless you. And please stand with the work we're doing. You can support this work. You can go right above the subscribe button. There's a donation link there, as well as our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. If you're having problems there, try IsraelReturns.com. That's .com, not .org, but .com on Israel Returns. Both those websites there, we have a way that you can donate there electronically, or at the end of the video, you'll always see our address in Prague, Czech Republic. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Shalom. Oh,